Well, it sounds like that wonderful sizzle of meat it in is. the pan. Is that what we've got That's going on? That's exactly Kristen? what we have going on now. So we're doing today, we're going to do a, uh, this is one of the pork chops that we do at Bourbon. Okay. So the pork chop itself is from right over the border. Yes. We only crossed one border in North Carolina in Sandy Run. It's called uh, Heritage Farms. Say it again. Heritage Farms. Heritage Farms, okay. Yeah, so Heritage Farms has been around for quite a while, but they sold most of their pork to the Japanese market. How fascinating. Well, well we know that they have that wonderful desire for extremely high quality meat. And oh, higher yeah. fat content because oh, there's more flavor in fat. So this is going to be a traditional pig that exactly. was marbled and didn't yes. have all the fat on the outside. Yeah, so similar to the ones that we get at the restaurant yes. from like Holy City Hogs or yes. Altman Ranch. Mm -hmm. um, Those old fashioned pigs. Ossabaws, black. So much more tender. Yeah. Tender and just so much more Juicy. flavorful yeah. because of the fat content. Yeah. So. Um, but whereas, like a lot of our smaller ranchers that uh, that we do get some of our hogs from, uh, can only raise so many, like the production. Yeah, yeah. So what's great about uh, Cheshire is they've been doing it so long that we can get a constant supply at the restaurant. You know that you when something you, when you order have an order exactly. that the delivery is going to come. Right. You can keep it on the menu, and you know the quality yes. is going to be there every so. single time you cook. But you know, it was interesting what you said earlier about how we are an agricultural state. And I moved here 23 years ago, and I came from Minnesota, which you do not usually immediately think, oh, agricultural state, just due to the amount of snow we get there. The climate's harsh. The climate is harsh. But I, when I, in my restaurant there, I had more local farmers to work with than I first, when I first moved to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I was so disappointed. I was like, this is just crazy. So, you know, you, you're very well aware that we started the farmer's market in Columbia and everything. And so because of that... And where were y'all at first? Our very first one we held at uh, Gervais and Vine. Yeah. Emil, Emil called me up and said, what, you want to do a market? And yeah. I said, please. Yeah. It'll give me the opportunity to meet farmers. So we did it there. Then we moved to Whaley. Whaley, yeah. And yeah. we outgrew that. And now he's got it on Main Street. Now we're and close in Main Street. I'm Soda saying City it's wonderful. Morning. Exactly. Really now, did you put a little bit of olive oil in the pan? or what I put a little bit of olive oil okay. in the pan. Um, and did you season him before you started cooking him? Not only that, but I brined it. Oh, you did? I'm a huge proponent of okay. brining. And um, that means you put it in a salt. In a salt and soup. somewhat and some sugar solution. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And we let it we let it uh, brine for upwards of about twelve hours. Okay. Then okay. it gets pulled out. So what we so at Bourbon what we use is salt, some and then instead of sugar we use sweet tea. Sweet so, tea. Yeah, so that adds our Why that, not? so that adds our sugar to yeah, it. Then yeah. we add garlic, thyme. And tea has all kinds of things associated with it. Might do something we don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's got antioxidants, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So and a little garlic and thyme. And okay, a little garlic okay. and thyme. Some bay leaf. So once we're seared off, I'm going to go into the oven because it's a really thick chop. So sit this in the oven. I also brought some of our collard greens uh -huh. to serve with the dish. Well, you sure are going to have Tony happy with that because he is the collard green <laughs> specialist. And so, we all love collard greens. So now we're going to make dirty farro. So farro is a grain that, uh, that Glenn Roberts over at Anson Mills has brought back um, in this area. We had some gals um, from Clemson's um, from Columbia cooking on, and they were they brought some of um, Anson Mills fat farro, and they yeah. were talking about how wonderful it is. And we loved the flavor. It, um, it was very different. It was different from brown rice. I actually liked yeah. it a little better. The, yeah. the tooth of it was different. Exactly. It, yeah, it's wonderful. Different. Yeah. So to make so basically, it's like making dirty rice. Mm -hmm. We're not going to use livers in it. Um, well, too. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I will say something about that. Is that. Um, there, there are a lot of traditional recipes for andouille and dirty rice that contain livers in it. But spending the amount of time that I've spent now down in um, Louisiana. Bourbon has kind of a Cajun aspect yeah. to it, don't you? So That's I've spent kind of, a lot yeah. of time down there, at, down in New Orleans, Mississippi, Louisiana uh -huh. area. And um, one thing that I get kept getting told by family after family was, oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Okay. We, we might use them once in a while if we don't have enough to make a meal out of oh. them. But if we're going to do a slaughter yeah. and we're going to have, and we have a lot of livers, yes. whether it be from the pig, whether it be from the cow, yeah. whether it be from the chickens, yes. that's a separate meal. Okay. You okay. don't waste it. So, in, so right now we're just doing the andouille. So we make, so we make our own andouille. Okay. And what makes andouille andouille? 
Well, it's a, now we, we, we do ours, we, we spent a lot of time on that too. Um, andouille is, is really just a spiced pork uh, sausage. sausage. Okay. Yeah. Um, but but what, we associate it so much with Cajun cooking. Yes, definitely. And uh, because it's a lot of those traditional seasonings that you find in the Cajun uh, mm -hmm. cupboard. Um, what we do differently is we, we allow ours, after we've cut it, after we've chunked up all of the pork, we toss it with all the spices and also a little bit of vinegar. Oh. And then we let that sit for mm -hmm. over a day. Mm -hmm. um, we just call it, we just put it on cure for a day. Yeah. So it cures for a day with a little bit of vinegar in it and then it goes into the grinder and we pipe uh -huh. it out into right. okay. uh, natural skin. And you added a little onion over here. So we add a pepper? little bit of the trinity. Uh -huh. So oh, we've got. And, and the celery too. So we've got celery, okay. green pepper, and onion. We're going to add a little bit of garlic to this. That's why we have so much That's garlic. That's why I brought so much yeah. garlic, okay. exactly, because we wanted some of that in here. And turn our heat up a little bit. Our heat accidentally turned off. I don't know what happened. This, this stove is a mystery to me, I used to <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to gas, yeah. even in my house. Um, then we're going to, uh, after this is sauteed a bit, we're going to deglaze just a little bit with some sherry vinegar. Uh -huh. So okay. add a little bit of acidity to it. Because it's all about balance. And we're going to get all those fun things that stick to the bottom of the pan loosened up so we won't exactly, lose any of those. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Now you don't usually get a whole lot sticking to the bottom of a non-stick pan. That's true. But, yeah. <laughs> but for the magic of television. But some people still like to use the old traditional cast iron I, I do yeah. too. I, that's yeah. all I use. I know. I can <laughs> yeah. 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 Cast iron. Now. Now how did you prepare the farro? So the farro is just literally, we poach it, um, we just simmer it like we would any grain mm -hmm. um, in a flavorful broth. Okay. okay. So we use usually our chicken broth, yeah. or chicken stock yeah. that we uh -huh. make in the restaurant. Sure. Okay. And in that goes. And in that goes. Now does it take a long, long time to simmer? Is it it a does slow take cooking? quite a while. It's uh -huh. kind of, it, you know, it reminds me a lot of um, Lengthwise wild rice from Minnesota. Oh yeah, that yeah, that's not yes. a fifteen minute deal. No, it's not okay. a, definitely okay. not. All right. And you can take it to different levels too. That's what's wonderful about it, is that you can really just like just like wild rice, you can take this to where it's puffed up and uh -huh. exploding out of its shell. Or, or depending how much resistance you want. Yeah. Just yeah. like pasta. We yeah. like a little bit more bite in it. Okay. A little bit of seasoning. Now in there, have you got um, no salt and pepper, what else? Salt, pepper, some granulated garlic, a little bit of cayenne. Oh, um, a, little bit of, a little bit of heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we, and it's freshly ground pepper. Oh, I know, because it loses that aromatic it aspect. It really, really quickly, does. It? It's yeah. shocking. Yeah. yeah, I highly recommend anybody at home, if you're a home cook, get rid of the store-bought ground pepper and just get, buy yourself a decent uh, pepper grinder. The smells really get nice over here. We we go through so much pepper that we actually use a we a repurposed coffee grinder <laughs> with a giant bin on it. Yeah, that was the greatest. That was the that greatest. Was, yeah. uh, well, you know, you you get mighty tired. That was the, like yeah, that was the greatest yeah. kitchen hack I think we've had in the past year. Exactly. Yes, that you can. Tiny pepper grinder around. So. Now what I brought here. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what this is. So this is the, uh, it's a bourbon glaze that we do at the Ooh. restaurant. So what we'll do. Well, I'm glad we finally get some brown whiskey. I know, in exactly. Yeah. I can't believe I didn't bring any, but <laughs> you know, it is, it's, the weather was so nice out, I wasn't thinking brown liquor. In South Carolina, it changes from day to day. Yeah, well, that's true. You have to be prepared for all forecasts, don't you? <laughs> all, all two seasons. Yeah. Mm, right. Things are looking good. Grab a plate. Okay. So what we'll do here, so we're gonna go. So here's our mm, mm, dirty mm, farro. Oh, it's beautiful. While the pan is still hot, mm -hmm. we're gonna go ahead, add our bourbon glaze. Now what, what we've got in here is really just um, Steen's cane syrup. Uh huh. Cane uh, syrup has such a wonderful flavor. Yep. And we've got people doing it right here in South Carolina. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Last year was brutal, though. A lot of the people I know that they make have, it, yeah. they weren't able to. I know. Yeah, yeah, it was the same with sorghum. It was mm -hmm. really a bad year. It was just so hot. And then, place our pork chop. 
on there. We'll bring this up. And I'm so glad it's got a wonderful piece because when you get to the point where we're really going to get everything off exactly. the bottom, you need a handle, <laughs> Exactly. So it's uh, so it's bourbon. It's reduced bourbon. Some cane syrup. Cane syrup and our uh, pork stock. Okay. So it's a very concentrated pork stock. Let me finish. Oh, and look how it With just that glaze. hugs that little chop. And coats it so beautifully. Then we finish with a little bit of our collard greens. Wonderful greens. collard greens, yep, yep. So And you like tender collards, I can tell. I like them that way too. You got a little bit of onion mixed in with them or a yep, little bit that? of onion. Yep. Boy, they look delicious. Have you had the opportunity to try Nat Bradford's uh, Bradford collard? No, he's got a Bradford collard. I know about his watermelon. Yeah. He's got a collard green too. Nat has a Bradford collard that is as sweet and tender as a as a lettuce leaf. Well, because the whole thing about the Bradford watermelon didn't hold up to shipping. Exactly. But boy, wasn't it fabulous exactly. for fresh use. And that's what we're trying to get. Right. We're trying to find those things that you really want to have it come from the field and right. into the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's or beautiful. at least no farther than the North Carolina right. line. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I just think what a lovely, lovely presentation. The colors are beautiful. The flavors for those of you, you'll just have to take my word for it. It really is fabulous. And um, I, it certainly makes me um, excited to think that in Columbia, um, We've got bourbon right there where people right. can go and have all the and have an opportunity to visit with someone who really is concerned with seeing that you're using local, yes. sustainably produced produce and vegetables yes. at every at every, at every single chance. Sustainably yeah. and responsibly. And I think we've yes. got some um, your web your website up there. So tell us how we can find out more about all you. All right. Well, you can go to bourboncolumbia.com. All right. Um, and also our event company where we do the farm to table dinners, um, both at City Roots and all in bizarre places all around the, uh, uh -huh, the, the yeah. Midlands is our farm to table marvelous event company. Marvelous places. Yes, yes. marvelous okay, places. Okay. And then we're also the producers of the largest whiskey tasting in the nation. Wow, in the nation. Yeah, it happens in uh, at the end of September, Thursday, September 29th, and you can find the details. It's called the Great American Whiskey Fair. All right. Well, my birthday's in September. That might be what my like, present com your comes Your birthday is in here. September. Your birthday is in uh, Bourbon Heritage Month. How about that? Well, yeah, I, guess you can celebrate I guess I know what's going to happen. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank to, you. Thanks to for having me. To leave your wonderful places in Columbia oh, no and visiting with us.